We're off. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Percussion Hang. It's December 2021, and I'm so excited and honored to have uh, not only a world-class percussionist, uh, musician, dancer, teacher, but also a friend. And Alessandra and I have known each other for way too many years. But uh, thank you for being here, Alessandra. Welcome. Pleasure, pleasure. And I wish we lived closer. I always say that. Yeah, and you do get out here occasionally, but I know you're usually busy and it's like a whirlwind tour and everything. So I'm, well, if you don't mind, a, I'll just let my you. My life has been on Zoom lately. I have it's been, been Zoom, yeah. Zoom. Instead of Zooming around, we're just Zooming in place. <laughs> yes, that's so, a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of me talking about you, how about if you just give people, a, you know, a, who is Alessandra Baloney quickly? Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I know that's a big topic, but. It's what, very... what should people know about what you're doing? Because I know it's a lot, but what are the highlights? Well, like you, I share the passion for healing through rhythm and through drumming. So that's a big part of my life. And that's how we connected and from way back. And um, so I, de I devoted my life to reviving, researching, learning, and then mastering the Southern Italian tambourine, which is um, an unusual instrument because it's comes from ancient times, from pre-Christian times, as the south of Italy was part of Greece called Magna Grecia, Greek Greece. And uh, it was used already in ancient times for ceremonies by women priestesses initiated in the goddess mysteries, and also from men and women for the rites of Dionysus. So it was used for ecstatic ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Beautiful part of this tradition is that in the south of Italy, it never disappeared, while in other parts of the Mediterranean, it's gone we still use it for ceremonies. So as I went back to Italy to start this group that I have here in New York called I Giulari di Piazza, I know it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> the Players of the Square, which is Renaissance folk music, the way we started. And I went back in the South to learn the instrument better. I realized the power of this. This is not just a, an entertainment tambourine, but it's a technique which is not so simple to master, because as you saw, it's very fast, very intricate, but it really ha is it's powerful and it comes back you know, to the fact that the tarantella, the main rhythm, 6-8, was originally music and dance therapy. So I experienced that while I was learning it from the old people, from the masters of each town, going down you know, from Naples, Campania, Calabria, Sicily, all the south, Puglia. As I experienced it for myself, I also felt that it had the power, you know, for anyone who's, you don't have to be Italian to benefit from that healing tradition. And I'm very proud to say that it's really one, a big part of, you know, the traditional music and dance therapy is the tarantella. And the other aspect for the bigger drum, the tamorra, I have them here, then I'll demonstrate if you want later, is the honor in the Black Madonna still today. You see a couple behind me, I think, but I'll, and the Black Madonna representing the Earth Mother, goddess, the goddess of the moon, and different aspects, especially Cibele and Isis from Egypt and the African Mother. As you know, all these rhythms we play are even very African, 4-4. Four, four, mm -hmm. So that's been yeah, a well, big part of my life. And it yes. is African roots. There is no way out of that. <laughs> that's where sure. we well, it, I mean. Of course, because the Mediterranean just separates Northern Africa from yeah. from Europe, so from I Italy especially, it's yeah. right there. So I know you just talked about the instruments and the rhythms, and I'm I'm sure some people are wondering now their interest is peaked. Would you mind just doing a quick demo so people can contextualize? They have some idea of what you're talking Absolutely. about. Yeah, that'd be great. So we'll hear a little bit. And of course, I devoted my life to singing. I, I started as a child to sing. I always sang. I was also a child actress and folk dancer. But then this became my passion. And I combined it with everything else. But but you were talking about rhythm. So this is the <laughs> the Black Madonna drum that I designed with Remo. Behind me, you can see some of the traditional ones. I now have them on the wall. I hardly ever use them because they're goat skin and they break and they're very valuable to me as a mem memory you know of things i learned but i wouldn't use them because as in, you, as you know as a professional percussionist you can't risk it <laughs> that the goat skin breaks or it's out and so this is uh, my design with remote based on that um, it's called tamorra which means frame drum 
I'll, I'll do a little bit of the rhythm and maybe you want should I do a little bit of the singing that goes with it sure okay. whatever you want to do you've seen me do this book <laughs> <laughs> we chant with this before <laughs> yeah. The drummers have a lot of stamina, so that's a very big part of this. You develop first the technique, which is based on this movement of the arm. That's crucial that the arm that holds the drum keeps moving. Mm. Like other frame drums, you know, they don't really move when they play. Our is right. always moving. And then, of course, the balancing, and then there is all the patterns, but then the stamina is the hardest thing to develop. And, and that was really my focus as a woman because this used to be a woman instrument but then mostly men started to play but the women who used to play were peasants that worked in the fields and they used the strainers you know to plant seeds into the earth to make the frame drums so it was directly connected to the earth mother and they did it for fertility rights but then with the evolution of women they started to leave the fields don't work in the fields anymore and they stopped drumming. So I always want to say that it's not because men stopped them, but it was like a grandmother and a mother, and then the young women left. You know, they mm. didn't do it. Now it's coming back. Mm -hmm. But when I started, I saw the older, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, I saw old women play, and it was really mind blowing how strong they are. So strong. Very big women. See, too. Yeah, and, you, and especially for you being, you know, being a, just at the tip of the at the tip of the spear, the tip of the boat here, uh, for so many years, for so long, I know you've been so dedicated, and uh, and you took it to such a high degree too. And I, I just think, you know, everybody was like, "Wow, where did this, where did this person come from?" I mean, you, I, you've really just right. been a force. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. When we first met with Remo, when I met Remo, I wasn't even sure what I was getting into, you know, in designing new instruments because I think that's true for a lot of traditional people you probably know that they, they don't like to break the tradition you know they want right. to keep the goat skin or the deer skin or and in the beginning I was kind of um, you know wondering if I was doing something wrong you know to evolve the tradition but actually I realized that's the best thing you could possibly do to share it with the world Sure. And technology changes and we have different technologies. We have different materials now. We should use them. Absolutely. Um, and especially for the reasons you said, a lot of the traditional drums are beautiful. They're valuable. They're sentimental, but they're fragile. So we all have our, you know, our travel <laughs> drums, our gigging drums. Yes. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> yeah. My friends in the south of Italy who are so traditional, you can never break their mentality. But that's OK. You know, that's yeah, who they sure. are. Yeah. They sure. travel and... with hair dryers, heating pads, all these things, <laughs> and all different kinds of tambourines. So usually, if it's you know, it just at least one during a long performance, one of them could break, you know, if outside. Yeah. And then I look at them and I go, three more drums." <laughs> 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 Not only because uh, I play in all kinds of weather with this, and as yeah. you know, they design really good drum heads, so the tone it's never gonna 
Goat skin will never match the stones that we created. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, it, it depends on the drum and the tuning, of course. I, I love the, the, you know, the warmth of like a calf skin on a conga drum or even goat skin on a djembe. It just has a traditional yep. sound. You but for music? your drum, you know, it's tuned pretty low. I mean, as long as you're good with the sound, that's the only thing that matters to me. So oh, if you're absolutely. okay with it, then yeah you, i mean because it I works really for... want to say as a singer i really care about the tone of the tambourine a lot of tambourine players don't sing in either mm -hmm. of these. you know the, the big the big you know biggest performers do but so yeah. they they have different kinds for different songs which i do too but as a singer the main thing for me with Rima was to develop a tone that i like to sing with with this, especially right. his head it's beautiful and, so let's hear that one yes. How about a so this is the tamburello which is the usually 12 inch, uh, the other ones are 16 inch. And many times they do have double rows of jingles. And this is the, the one that is used for the very fast 6-8 of the Tarantella. And the original one used to cure the mythical bite of the Tarantula is called Pizzica Tarantada. Again, this goes back to the pre-Christian times, but it became known as the dance to get rid of the poison of the spider bite in the Renaissance. So the people danced in a frenzy to let go of their what they really was like a madness they suffered. But then only in the late 50s, early 1960s, ethnomusicologists and psychiatrists and anthropologists studied the people that suffered from this malady and they found out the bite was a metaphor and they suffered from a form of depression called parentismo. So this is the, I'm going to show you a couple of the patterns that are typical that were used to cure people from this madness and this was music and dance therapy for centuries <laughs> So that's very quick intro, but I want to show you the, the, this one of the main accents to which the body of the person that was afflicted by the metaphorical bite of the tarantula would respond, spin around, fall on the ground in a trance, move like a spider, and the musicians were called like the doctors, the real shamans that knew the cure, and the tambourine really had the main uh, focus was to get the person to respond, to let go, to enter a trance. And by doing that, they had a vision usually and they were healed. But it took three days and three nights. So, it's like many ceremonies in uh, other parts. Of yeah. The world. It's not a thing that you can rush. I mean, just to get, like, and you mentioned the stamina of the musicians earlier. It's very important because you're not just holding the space for the person, but the music is really driving it has to be it has to drive all the way through that um yeah they often see, they, you know people they knew said a lot motion. of songs a lot of different songs too right right the, so it's not just a drumming either i mean you have to know a lot of a lot of it's the whole context like you mentioned the word shaman i know that's probably an overused word but right now but yes it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's but it it's it is valid. I mean, and, and shaman are uh, knowledgeable on many many 
levels, right, of, of everything from environmental things to mm-hmm. emotional to psychosomatic, body, you know, mind, spirit, music, everything. It's a huge responsibility. Um, could you yeah, talk they, a I want to say there are other instruments that go with that are the violin, the guitar, and the accordion. Oh, great. Water, okay. When we're playing live for the solstice, we land with this ritual. My dancer will do the dance and we'll have the full band because the voice and the tambourine is the leading part of the, the cure in a sense that they, they have to understand what to do with the accents to get the person to react and to sing the right melodies. But then the full sound is with all the instruments. Beautiful. Now you said something that I'd like to ask you a little more about. You said that the dancer, and I've seen a little bit of this, and people can go to your website and see some photos too of these workshops and and the things that you do at your classes and retreats. You said the dancer will, you know, goes into a kind of a trance, right? And you correct me if I'm wrong, but you said move like the tarantula, right? Move yes. like the spider. And I'm I just fascinating to me because sometimes when we're in conflict, we're moving you know, in get against something, but in a way joining with the thing that, you know, becoming more like the thing will release the tension. Uh, in music therapy, there's this ISO principle we call it, which is meeting, you know, it's joining with the client. It's not making the client come to you. It's like you go to them. So to if them. somebody's suffering, ah, yeah. Okay. So helping people like join with the energy of the thing that's sort of tormenting them, they can thereby acknowledge it, validate it, and maybe release it. But could you talk to, about What's that? What's the name? I never heard that. Thank you for sharing that. What's the name? <laughs> what did you say? ISO? What's ISO the name principle. Yeah. ISO ah. just means the same. So. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. I learned something I didn't know. <laughs> I've been doing it, but I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that's part of it, but, but I'd like to hear your take on it. I'm just imposing my own, you know, view on it, but I'm not, of course, but I'm not, very I don't know. Well, my experience, one first going back in time, which I shared with you, is, uh, in nine, I was diagnosed with a cervical um, can- cancer of the, of the cervix, but the cells, and, and that was a terrifying experience. I went through surgery, I had a vision of the Black Madonna, then started to lead me on a sacred spiritual path, and then I did get sick again, and I danced the Pizzica, which that's the name of the dance, with a really good... A tambourine player when we were on stage and my musicians knew that I was doing it for me as a therapy not the audience <laughs> but I said I might as well do that because I knew by them with all the research that this was a real therapy so I remember doing that for a while and that you know the bleeding stopped and I never came back I canceled a surgery and I was fine ever since so that led me to start the workshops that you know, the healing workshops called Rhythm is the Cure. So in my experience, even though when I started, I didn't know this was going to happen. Because again, I think so many times I've been led to do this work, you know, without mm. really being so conscious I was going to evolve. And a lot of women that came to study with me were women who had been abused sexually and had huge traumas, everything stuck here in their, you know, solar plexus, of course, the womb the heart, and during this dance, incredible things started to happen, just like I had read in books. You know, I had studied it in books, I'd been to Puglia, but I never was part of curing someone who was really sick. And I started doing it, and my experience was like what you're saying, the, the person and I became like one, something really hard to explain, uh, because it's not scientifically easy, easy to explain, but the, the rhythm really created like a vortex and the person would start spinning and spinning as I started playing until she, she was ready to fall backwards, which I always demonstrated the dancers. And those movements just come natural. People start moving like spiders. It's something we're releasing an imaginary spider web, you know, and legs go up, flying in the air, arms, and it's very acrobatic. And I had people do that, they were really, you know, heavy or no training at all but they're loose, the body just goes. And what I feel is that if I tune in with what's happening with the body, I can guide it together with the tambourine, the accents, and I, you know, through the years I could see things, like if one act, started doing accents and the person kept loosening up, loosening up, until I could feel something was released. 
and I could actually sometimes visualize that. It sounds, you know, kind of crazy, and and I swear there are no hallucinogenic, no drugs involved here, but you really <laughs> see things when you're doing this kind of work. So I would see sometimes blood if you were really traumatized, or I would have like a flash, you know, of something coming out of the womb. And after that, I could I would know the person was okay and should get up and finally then wake up. But in some cases, people were in a trance for a long, long time. So I had to really learn through the years, because it's when it first happened, I wasn't prepared. It worked, but I was like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> and I always had people with me, you know, sometimes therapists and you know, people who were trained in different ways. But, but then I realized that it, this is really just the power of this music. It's ancient, I didn't invent it. It really works to get rid of trauma. What? You, yeah. You what an amazing. Uh huh. It. You know. Of course, there's a time and a place for the more clinical side of things, but this is, like you said, ancient. It's beyond thought. All right. We can't. You can't think this up. You. It, you have to do it, and it's powerful. I mean, the body. You know, motion uh, facilitates emotion. Right. So getting allow I mean, there's so many things that you're doing there, I think are so amazing and beautiful, but also just touching and powerful because people are people do have trauma and they do carry it in their bodies a lot. And what's our way in our modern, you know, quote, modern society to allow people to get that stuff out? You know, it's there's not yeah. many ways. Um, and what you're doing is so artistic and, I, and also for women and being a woman. I think woman to woman is important too. Very I mean, I think, I, you know, I don't, I, I just feel like there's a, there's an intimacy there and an understanding that's not going to happen any other way also. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. yeah also it's the so movement powerful. of the dance is very, you know, feminine the way from the womb, but I've worked with young ma men that have been also abused and it has proved very efficient to people change their life. Yeah. I've had, had a few. So I do want, because I know where the time's going to go quickly, and I do want to help connect people with your work more, you know, so I do want to ask you, and then we have questions too, but I, I do want to give you the opportunity now because I think people want to know, you know, what are you doing? How can people connect with you more? So What's I going on? changed my life from a touring artist in practically a month and a half in 2020 as COVID hit. And started teaching online. So if anyone here is interested, I have ongoing drumming and singing lessons. I now teach four to five days a week. I have a lot of students, <laughs> and it works. So I re I developed a method, you know, in person that then I figured out on Zoom how to, to do it. And what's been really inspirational is that I I've taught way more than I ever could in person. Because people continue, they start and they think it's going to do eight sessions, but usually everyone likes it and they stay on. So some people have been with me for a year and a half, but uh, so there is beginners, intermediate, and advanced. But I, I teach different songs, so there I real I created this method in a deeper way. So that the first level people will learn a style with the tamboriada and and the chants that go with it, and they go into the tarantella and the songs. I've been able to teach our repertoire, which I never thought was possible. Hmm. Because if you're not Italian or in person, how do we do that? It's amazing. So out of this, I'm creating really an online center school called the Center for the Black Madonna. I already began that, and I edited eight videos. I, I want to share that with you too, probably I'll email you, because in the videos you see all the different feasts and ritual with people, you know, the old people drumming, singing, I have old footage. So it's been an incredible time. So people can access that, you know, if they sign up and not only learn the drumming, but the songs, even if you're not Italian. So my students, many of them are Italian American originally, but none of them really speak Italian, maybe two out of 40, you know, and, um, and they are learning these dialects. It's incredible. I swear, Kalani, I never thought I could do this online, never. <laughs> and it's, in, it's very inspiring. And I, I do miss playing live, of course, but, but it, this has given me, as I get older, the whole idea of leaving a legacy, you know, things I used to discuss with Remo when he was alive. So people can stay in touch with me, of course, by email. And if they, and that I, am, I have a one class that I can send to people that it's already, if they sign up, 
that is an introduction. And now I'm, I'm working on recording more classes so that people can also download. But every class is recorded so the person gets the recording and they practice with it and can come back next week. We also teach music and singing with my guitarist John La Barbera. And tomorrow we're holding as hosts online, which we were going to do live, but things um, in a theater downtown Manhattan, but things are still too strange now with COVID. <laughs> we're going the mm -hmm. safer way. Yeah. So tomorrow at 6 p.m. our time, I will have my guitarist here, my dancers. I created a space in my, in my living room. And people on Zoom, uh, Steve Gorn is going to do beautiful Indian ragas on the Bansuri flute, which are the same scales in some of our chants. And my Native American friend, Muriel Bors, is going to do storytelling. Because we used to do this together. We call it Drums of Illumination. So this is called Songs and Drums of Illumination, to really mm. bring the light after the darkness. And we will focus also on the rhythm and chants that were done in Italy in the Middle Ages during the plague. So it's been a big part of this tradition and that I revived to make people understand there's another way to send away fear, fear of death, fear of the plague. It's through rhythm and spinning, the dancing. We will mm. do that tomorrow. And we teach dance online too. We we do a whole we have a whole program. <laughs> <laughs> you believe? I never thought this was possible, but we do it. Yeah. Well, it's a you know that's the good thing that's come out of this pandemic, right? Is it's made us all a little more uh, industrial and. Yeah. You know, we have to come up with solutions, but just are you doing the same thing? You're doing things online, too? Uh, of like, course, more, yeah, a lot more, uh, including, of course, the World Drum Club channel. And all the people that are here today are patrons or supporters of the channel, and I always Fantastic. thank them for that, of course. Um, I hope they don't all leave me and go to you now. I don't know, it sounds really <laughs> tempting, they're not the same uh, thing. <laughs> Uh, no, it's all good. You know, we, you, I mean, I study from so many people and I'm just so happy to have been knowing people like you and other, and you know, all the people in our community of the P, the percussive art society people and right. all around the world, you know, it's yeah. just good. I just always encourage people to study from it, as many people as possible, Me too. get as much as you can. But so tomorrow, could you say that, you know, the time and how do people go to that? How do people? So the time is at 6 p.m. in New York and 3 p.m. in the West Coast. Um, you can go to my website, alessandrabelloni.com. And my email is abelloni at al.com, which shows there. And the tickets are $30. It's going to be over two hours because there's a lot of us you know, performing. And we also do some interactive at the end because I'll teach the Yeshe Sole chant. Maybe I can close with that today if you want. Um, just chant to the sun. <laughs> you have a lot there, but not here. Uh, <laughs> we need that sunlight. And, um, yeah. So people can, at the end, if they want to ask us questions, they can. It's special because we're interactive with different artists, you know, different, different tradition. And, we, and when we do it on stage, of course, it's unbelievable. You know, we all dance. We are Native American dancers and African dancers, Brazilian. And tomorrow we'll have some Brazilian rhythms and songs, too. And uh, That sounds you, amazing. Yeah. If, I mean, if you're free, I'll invite you if you want to join. Or, 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 but we'll also be recording it. And I got inspired okay, to do something together because I, I'm in the center that we're creating. I do invite guest artists. That's all about that. Like you said, to share. People have to know everything is possible <laughs> with drumming, especially. And also, and you know, I wrote a book. Do you have that book? Oh. Maybe not. Healing Journey. No, I don't. Black Madonna. Right. I don't think you have this. I could yeah, I know. I remember that coming out. Yeah. Talk about that for a minute. What so you know? This is my life journey. It's four hundred and thirty-five pages. Wow. And yeah, it really is an incredible journey. It's my research. Uh, as I started, you know, I began in the early '80s to go down to the south of Italy to understand who is the Black Madonna and why she's important today. Each chapter is one location with one Black Madonna history, and also going back in the ancient times but it also has lyrics of the songs, so, so it's something people can experience and learn, and, and prayers. And at the end, there is a link to the, to the CD, so you can download the music and practice the sacred mm. dance. And it was being translated in French. I'm so happy it's now in, in France. It's a publisher is very good. It's Inner Traditions, Baron Company, and the foreword 
It's by very, a very famous writer and visionary doctor, Reverend Matthew Fox, who's from the West, mm. West Coast. And so this really has actually added to change in my life for the best. It got, you know, it's been a bestseller on the folk dance, really good book. And Congratulations I'm on that. I'm working on making it into a film, hopefully. Oh, nice. Yes. Good, good. Well, I hope that happens. I mean, because your story is yeah, amazing. <laughs> Just, I mean, this, I know just from what I know, which is very little, you know, of, of what you share, you know, outwardly, but I'm sure the, your personal journey is incredible. Very intense. And I'll be in Los Angeles in February. So if you're there, it would be great to connect. I'll be there from the 21st through March 1st. Okay, I a, great. I have a concert February 26th at the Italian American Museum in LA, probably something in Topanga, but... I'll, I'll email you, so see, let's see if we can connect while I'm there. Maybe I can get you into the World Drum Club Studios. I would love that. <laughs> you're in Valencia. If you're in Valencia or not. Where, where, where I'm in the valley, in the West Valley. Ah, like near, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll st I stay in West Hollywood. Oh, yeah. We're not too far. 20 minutes. Absolutely. Well, I'll email 40 you the dates and let's make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's we'll do that, okay? It's a date. And then yes. um, we have a question. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. I want to um, move there. That's the whole thing. I really want to move to Los Angeles. You should. You I should. I, I don't even tell you what the weather's like today, but um, it's pretty good. Uh, when I have email, a I want to ask you something. So I'm serious. At least spend three, four months okay. there. Very sure, serious. sure. Yeah. No, you should do that. It would be great. Um, Steve has a question. Steve's one of our patrons. He what he he said, what's he the, uh, the most Did basic? Did I meet you before? No? Okay. What's that? Mind. He looks oh. very familiar. Okay. I think Steve, I think you just have that look. <laughs> You're not thinking of a young Santa, are you? No, I, someone <laughs> I used to meet in North Hollywood at Remo. I don't think he's the same person. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, what's the most basic technique or rhythm uh, that, you know, students start with? The Tamoriata. That's the first class. So in the first class, I teach all this, the pattern, this eight, all this is the pattern. I'm doing it soft now. So all these are pa the patterns of the tamoriada. Usually, to do it right, it takes three, four sessions. The first one is an introduction. Each class is 90 minutes, but um, but I have uploaded this. If people want to download it, now, this is a, the only thing I've uploaded so far. If, if you want to just download that, I can tell you the link. It's on Teachable, and, um, and it also has the chance with it. But if you mm. do it live, it's fantastic, obviously. You know, I got you through all this. So I have a beginner's class that just started on Thursdays, but um, but I may have more beginner's class coming up. So if you get in touch, I'll explain it. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. We're gonna, it, it's, we have about 15, 20 minutes max left. So if you guys have any questions, you can put them in the chat or just ask them, unmute yourself and um, ask a question, so. No. In the meantime, we're gonna plan. <laughs> we're gonna plan our Nobody jam. Nobody has uh, a question. Really? Okay. I think they do. You know, people are. Did you have a question, Rebecca? Or are you just wave? Are you just moving your? You can unmute, yeah. Can I? Oh, I might have to ask to unmute. There we go. Okay, now you should be able to unmute. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, this is this is really helpful, beautiful information. I'm fascinated. And um, just wanted to know, okay, so the instrument is called a basic tambourine because it doesn't look like a basic. No, it's not. It's called, it's really called tamburello. Ta tamburello. Tamburello, right? And if you have, if you're interested in, of course, they're, they're made by Remo on my website, alessandro.com. I, I sell on these two. They used to make more, but now because of COVID, they only make these two. This one is called tamorra. You want okay. me to put it in the chat, the spelling? Oh, that would be great. Sure. How, you want to do that or you just tell me or just say it and I'll type it? T-A-M-B-U-R-E-L-L-O. 
tamburello. Tamburello, ok. And the, yep. the large one, tamorra. T-A-M-M-O-R-R-A. All right. Ok. Thank you. Welcome. Do you play frame drums? I, I have not. Um, I'm just learning about them from Kalani. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I was. I didn't even know there was such a thing until probably a couple months ago. But wow, that's incredible! Yeah. Wow, because now they're becoming more popular. Uh, yes, there is a big movement with women frame drummers and all that. But um, of course, when I started, nobody knew this existed. So, <laughs> as Kalani <laughs> said in the beginning, right? Kalani, nobody knew what this. That's was. right. <laughs> And Remo really took a chance in believing in me and creating this, um, these instruments because it's not, there was no market, you know, really. We created I, I was, a, uh, so, yeah, okay. Oh, oh I, I was just also wondering that um, with these dances that you described, are there, and you mentioned other instruments like string instruments, but are Lots. there other, other percussion instruments that are involved? No, no. okay. No, only the frame drums, yes. Okay. Traditionally, now yes, now we, when we do, you know, what we call world music, yes, we put some. I use people play drum set. Uh, I created an, a, what I call the techno tarantella, the techno tamboriata. <laughs> Again, because we, I realize we have to keep evolving. Mm -hmm. Some ethnomusicologists and even anthropologists. I respect everybody. I studied a lot of different books, but they think as this is something from a museum. It is not. If you go to these places in the south of Italy, or you go to Brazil or Africa, you'll see people will do the ceremonies, but their music on stage will keep evolving. Mm -hmm. it, otherwise, there'd be no folk music. You know, right. it has right. to keep moving yes. with what's happening in the world. So uh, even in in, uh, in Italy, there are the groups I like the most use different instruments. And they the beauty of that for me in New York is that I collaborate with artists like the Bansuri flutist, Steve Gorn, who then taught me that the raga is the same as our, our Lydian mode that we chant in. Uh, so we have people coming in with different backgrounds. My violinist is amazing and he's Russian. My guitarist, John LaBarbera, plays everything and every possible string instrument. And other people that join us here are from different traditions and that's when this music will become more global. It's not a museum piece, so more, more instruments, the better. <laughs> Speaking of global, um, I, Trey has a question. Were you done, Rebecca? I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank interject. you so much. Okay. All right. Awesome. So Trey had a question. And he just wanted to know what uh, do you feel is the connection with Africa? Uh, because you, you mentioned the connection with Africa. So could you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. It's the connection with Africa is that south, the south of Italy is closer to Africa than Europe. So through the centuries, if you study, I don't know, the Roman history and the you know, Greek too, but the Roman and the Sicily, um, there were black Roman emperors, you know, and black um, oaks. Can you, I think somebody's in my house too early. <laughs> um, give me a okay. Who is it? Who is it? I have no idea. Okay, Maybe no, you're sorry, getting, are you to... getting a delivery? Do you need to check it? I have check no idea it. who this is. Can you give me a second? I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Never, this never happens. That's okay. I'll entertain everybody myself. Um, well, you guys, I mean, this is such a treat. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure like you, if you've never seen Alessandra and the first time you see her play that, the tamburello, uh, it, it's it's just pretty amazing. And uh, maybe she can show the, the there's a little hand flipping oh, technique. Never happens. That she does. The super telling me that there's going to be no water. Here we go. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. So let so, me uh, bring sorry. you. So, so the African uh, roots are embedded in us. If you go to the south of Italy, you'll see people that are very dark and, you know, have the Afro and all that. The rhythm, the 4-4, as if you studied African music, it's really hard. Even though this is Neapolitan, you can hear it's the African roots, and the Black Madonna also represents the African mother. 
So when mm. these rites were done in pre christian times, this was all mixed, you know, it wasn't just the south, the southern Italians, it was all that area, you know, and the Egyptians had a big settlement in the region of Campania where we play this rhythm, and Egypt is Africa. Isis, the black goddess, is the first black Madonna and child. And the 680, you know very well, is definitely Africa, and they use it for all different different parts of Africa. I've never really been to, sort of, I've been to North Africa, but this... <laughs> Sometimes I hear these African songs and then it's the same rhythm. 680 is African, that's how it's been uh, defined by most people who study this music. That probably began there first. Could you uh, show just movement by movement the, the technique that you just used? I know people are probably wondering because it goes by so quickly. This is how I start the lesson. Thumb, rotation of your hand up, fingertips down. And that creates that triplet. But the elbows got to keep moving. This wrist has to be very relaxed. That's where you achieve the speed. But also this moves. This is not steady. This is not like this. Like this. So the first lessons I teach is really the people to understand that, and then to get the thumb strong to do the action. So that rotation creates that triplet sound. This movement of your wrist in and out creates the sound of the triplet. Then in, there are many techniques, we also slap. So there are many variations, but the basic is really thumb, move your elbow up, rotate your hand, fingertips down. Hope that's a little clear. It seems obscure in the beginning, but once you understand it, and then of course you have to start slow, and then when you get it, you can start slow. So my advanced students right now play this fast. They can play like this. that clear amazing yeah wonderful and i love that the different uh, hand positions just give this wonderful um changes of timbre you know the the different tones in there i mean every yeah. tone is different so it really to me it really gives a, a nice gentleness but also power and and just moving that rhythm forward and all the slap tone and i know i've seen you I've seen you play that thing like I, you know, I'm glad I wasn't the drum head, you know, let me just say <laughs> I would have been beat up. Uh, but I've, I know you can I get used to break them. I, when I didn't work with Rima, I used to break them. Yes. Yeah, you're breaking those. But that's the passion. I became really strong. I don't know how that happened, Kala. And I just started, you know, like, OK, let me try this. And I became really strong compared to Because you're guys. a woman. You're a woman, first of all. And I'm not pandering to the, <laughs> to the crowd. <laughs> I had to. I was challenged by men in the ceremonies, so I just yeah. said, "Okay, no one's going to stop me until I can play longer than they could." I know it sounds you know, crazy, that's a, but I had to prove myself as a woman. Right? No, that's absolutely true. And women, and also you know, people of color or minorities often have to do more just to get the same mm -hmm. level of regard and respect, you know, among I especially. Went through it all. Yeah, and it. I mean, especially in dr in the drummer community, because like you said, you know, a lot of things are, are dominated by men um, and therefore their control, uh, you know, of the flow of information, the work, the, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of the things, you know, the positions of authority get, you know, dominated and then women, you know, and it's harder for, for you to, to get in that, to take back what actually was originally kind of your, your territory, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, but you're yeah, doing in, it. In Italy, there is more machismo than here, though. I felt when I started, when I met you and then many other people through, you know, Remo, I never felt that men were challenging me. I just met people like you that were welcoming me, wanted to learn more. I didn't, 
I call you all my drumming brothers, you know, Draw, remember Draw Steine? Oh, yeah. Paolo Mattioli, who passed away. But everyone, Glenn Belez, who was my friend. And I never felt challenged by men in this country. But in Italy, it's still like, still like that. <laughs> that's because a lot of us are from California. <laughs> and that's true. Because <laughs> we're mellow. But even here, my, you know, my bro is Gordon Karlieb, who was a... Phil- you know, the percussionist with the Philharmonic and we're really my brother and sister. I, that's really what motivated me to keep going and that, to take it farther. Like you said, I had to take it farther because I realized here that my friends are not an obstacle, but inspire me to do other kinds of music. While in Italy, they're like, they see me, they want to demonstrate that they get, are better than me. <laughs> and I realized at this point, I can't change your mentality. No, and... Yeah, like you said, there's always going to be those traditionalists and the people that think that if you're going to do tr- folk music or, you know, anything from history, it, it has to be done the way it was back then. And, you know, there's room for both, right? We know that, I mean, there's people that still recreate the music of Bach and Mozart on traditional instruments and everything. But you say that's what you're doing, right? You just say it. Right. I'm playing in the traditional way from 1500s or this is how people did it in 1700. It doesn't mean that that's the way it should always be done. And I love that you, you know, you acknowledge that and you say, yeah, music's a living thing. It grows, it changes. We have to make it relevant for our lives now. I I think the tech, right. For today, we have different problems. We have different challenges. We have different things that are in our heads and in our bodies now, literally uh, because of the food and the air and the water and the the news and everything's different. So we need different solutions. Absolutely. And now yeah. when we improvise with my group, you will hear all these different styles of music coming in during the improv, and that's beautiful. And, you know, in Italy, they do probably do a little different because they don't have, they don't live the same daily life, and it's not going to be the same. People living in a rural place somewhere in the south don't have the mm. same sounds in their head that people who live in a city here or in California. So it's got, it's got to keep evolving. Anybody who's into folk music should remember that keep evolving. <laughs> Don't well, be stuck and, in the museum. And... <laughs> right. And just to bring it back to where we started with that kind of ISO principle idea is like your job, my job as a as a musician, um, you know, and when I work as a music therapist, too, and, and your job as, you know, doing therapeutic music and healing music is that we need to honor, you know, our the people we're working for by meet, yeah. going to them and and connecting with them. And if that means doing an electric, you know, electric version or whatever, the you know, if it yep. means updating the sound to connect with that person more because that's going to resonate with them a little bit better, then that's what yep. you do, right? That's true. I found yeah. that out when we started to use that, what I call a techno beat, but we, we did techno, a, yeah. a production. I don't know if you saw, we did it at the Rat Cat in LA with the people from CalArts, the Sp- Spider Dance. It's my musical about, about the history of the Pizzica and the Tarantella from the beginning of time, starting with the myth of Arachne and the Spider Woman, all the way to today. And we're using mm. um, electronic bi- music, by bi- electric violin. I realized when we use that, everybody moves or in a club. The moment we bring that in, young people, they really let go. Much more than if it was just a tambourine and a violin or a guitar. No sure. comparison. I did that at li- that festival in California, Lightning in the Bottle. I used that, the techno tarantella, so-called, and it was incredible. There are 300 people going, becoming spiders on the floor. <laughs> and I loved it. I said, only in California we can do this, man. Because here, I think in New York people are more uptight. They don't go as wild as people do in LA and California. But there was a great experience. And if I didn't use that techno form of tarantella, it wouldn't have happened. Impossible. For young people who had no idea what I was doing, you know. Right. They needed yeah. to hear that other beat. <laughs> yeah. So you move, you move a little towards them, and then they move a little more towards you. And you know, Absolutely. that's the that's the beautiful thing about music too is it's so flexible that way. Mm-hmm. Right. You're open. Uh, and you're, I mean, you're, and you're an artist. I, I, you know, the people that are stuck in the museum mode are like, you know, I guess they want to collect things and put them on shelves, but that's not what an artist does. An artist creates. Right. Absolutely. And artists, yeah. And yeah. And we innovate and we listen yeah. and we pay attention and we create things based on what Absolutely. we see and yeah, what people need, especially what you're doing. Well, I do want to wrap up. Does anybody have any 
your last chance for questions. And then I just want to make sure we maybe review, you know, your information again, Alessandro, just so people can make sure we have it. They have it. So the, my website is my name, alessandrabelloni.com. On Facebook, it's the same, Alessandra Belloni as musician. That page you can like. I, I have too many friends on my other page, which is Alessandra Belloni uh, 54. And then I'm on Instagram with my name. But also, the main thing is if you want to know about classes, it is on my website, alessandrabelloni.com slash online classes. But email me would be more direct. And the uh, book, Healing Journeys with the Black Madonna, is on my website, but it's on Amazon. So is my first book, which is instructional. It's called Rhythm is the Cure. That's the one where I teach the tambourine and frame drums. And if you tune in tomorrow, it would be great. If you email me, I'll, I'll send you the even, Eventbrite login information. And then stay in touch. And I'll hopefully see you. I, most people on the West Coast here or different parts? Of the world. <laughs> I think I think we're all spread out. <laughs> but maybe but we I, can I'll do... send you the dates then when I'm there. Okay. Yeah, we'll do something and maybe we can do a virtual thing or we can do some live streaming. You know, I've been doing live looping and stuff. And oh it's, yeah, it's that's what I want to do more. In a diff... I mean, now I teach on Zoom, but I want to do more of the live streaming with different, you know, channels and stuff. Yeah, I know you're yeah, good at well... this. I, I got I, I'll have some questions to ask. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have all these new zooming skills now. We might as well use them. I know. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, <laughs> but how is the situation there with the virus? The new thing coming? Is it? I know you. I I think it's mandatory. okay. Uh, you know, it's okay. We have we have some. You know, we're we're supposed to like my wife and I went to see Jose Feliciano last night. Wow. Uh, and yeah, and he's still hanging in there. How but old? you know, of course. And it was fun. And he, you know, so I'm there. I have a little, I shot some video on my phone because, you know, everybody shoots concerts now and they share them. And that's okay. Everybody likes that. But uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm watching Jose Feliciano live doing, you know, Feliz Navidad. So I was like, that's, that's fantastic. Right. It's like seeing Jimmy Buffett do Margaritaville in person. I mean, it's <laughs> like, you got to see that. But he was yes. great. And the band, he sounded great. His voice is amazing still. But um, but the point with COVID was that, you know, they say everybody keep your mask on, but nobody does it really. It's like half the audience no? is just really they don't care. People don't really care. But I mean, you know, whatever. It's all it's all right. We're Inside, I'm all boosted. They in the theater. They they took the masks down? Well, some people did. Yeah. I know York, they won't let I think they don't let you. It's very tough. Well, I, did, I just think but here I it's hard to enforce it. I didn't take a chance. I didn't want to take a chance of doing a live show and not have a lot of people. Yeah. Come. yeah. Yes. But we're, I mean, we're all, of course, we're all fully vaccinated and boosted and everything. So, you know, I think it's whatever people want to do at this point. It's kind of up yeah. to them, however, however much they want to protect themselves. Um, yeah. But let's, Alessandra, thank you so much. I, you. It's so Same good here. to connect with you. Same here. Yeah. It, Honor. It's just, yeah, it's just, thank you. It's just lovely to thank see you, you and. And, and hear also you. And send so, me the link when you're when you can when the recording. Yes. Well, yeah. and this video will be on the main channel uh, today at some point. I have to run out now, but um, I'll Great. put it up there later this afternoon. Everybody that's joining, thank you so much, and thanks for supporting. You know, World Drum Club. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Hope um, in person. Yeah, and we'll. <laughs> yeah, we'll and <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Thank you again, everybody. Bye. Happy A holidays. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Alessandra. Bye-bye.